Hello and welcome to Working With Miniatures. I'm Jim and today we're going to be painting Oxen from the Deep Cuts line by WizKids. Notice I didn't say Pathfinder Battles. If you look at the package, you'll see that well, Pathfinder Battles just aren't there. I don't know why. I might do a little research on that later, but for paints, we're going to be using Army Painter paints from the Mega Paint set, the Skin Tone Starter set, and the Speed Paint Starter set. Let's get to it. As I apply the speed paint to the oxen, I am careful to avoid as much of the mane and horns as possible, as these will be painted with a lighter color. The cleaner I keep the work now, the easier it will be later. On these miniatures, there are few details, so this will be an easy task. For the second oxen, I mix two dark speed paints. The speed paints combine easily and go on smoothly. I used this combination on a bucket on a previous Let's Paint video and this will be a staple for me going forward. For the first main painted, I again use a combination of speed paints from a previous video. It's another combination I am now fond of. For the horns of both oxen, I use pallid bone because it's, well, it's bone-like. Technically, since oxen do not shed horns like deer, that would make it a keratinized epidermis over keratin, kind of like our fingernails, but I guess there's bone inside of the horn, so close enough. Having finished with speed paints for this project, I apply two coats of Army Painter's anti-shine matte varnish. I have personally experienced the reactivation issue, and I do not mind taking this extra step. Here I begin adding glazes to the highest points of the musculature, building up the highlight slowly while avoiding the darker recesses. Here I use Thin Down Necromancer's Cloak, but I should have combined it with Darkstone at a 1 to 1 ratio. This would have made the transition more subtle. Then I could have come back with Necromancer Cloak for the highest points. I later fix all of this by glazing extremely watered down Gravelord Grey over the entire body. Uniform Grey was used to pick up highlights, but I believe this may have been too bright a color for this, and I might have been better to just use Necromancer's Cloak, as mentioned in the previous step. For the mane, I did not dry brush as I wanted to avoid getting paint on the horns or the hide, but if you're careful, dry brushing would be great for this. As mentioned in the previous Let's Paint video, skeleton bone as a highlight over palette bone is a perfect combination. Much like skeleton bone over palette bone, a highlight of fur brown performs well over hardened leather speed paint. Here I return with extremely watered down Gravelord Grey, glazing it all over the darker oxen's hide in order to dim the overly bright highlights. Here is the final result of my efforts. I can't get enough of how wonderfully pallid bone and skeleton bone combine, and I discovered that fur brown and hardened leather pair equally well. As for any lessons learned, I need to give more thought and test colors before glazing. 
Here is a quick view of the paints used for this project, and if you would like to see a tutorial on how I did the green grass bases, see the informational card in the top corner of your screen. That's going to be it for today. I hope you were inspired to start or expand your own collection, or maybe you just learned something. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and if you like the content in this video and would like to see more, please like, share, and subscribe. This is Jim with Working With Miniatures. I am truly grateful for your time, and I bid you a fond farewell. Till the next video.